Hi, everyone. Again, uh, this is the third series of my FPGA uh, tutorial. And in last video, we have seen how to uh, start a new project in Vivado 2022.2 uh, version. And uh, we also started a new file for uh, Verilog code as well as in the constraints file we have started. And in this video, we're going to continue uh, with the same file uh, by uh, adding a new program in Verilog as well as in the constraints file. So let me begin with the Verilog. And I just, you can see in the project manager under the source, you can see a design source. And just I double click this LED one, which is our, uh, we have created for dot uh, file. And uh, this is the file you can see. And the already generated uh, predefined codes is by just adding, uh, we have added a clock as the input. So it gives a predefined code. For time being, I delete all this uh, code. And then we'll write a simple uh, a dot verlog uh, code to blink the LED. So I already created a simple code. Just I will explain what code I have taken. So in this code, uh, we have this uh, module LED blink. So in Arduino or any other program, we have two structures. One is the setup file and the loop file. Whereas in this program, you can see there is uh, no such structure is available, but you can see the first four lines is uh, you can compare as a white setup file, uh, uh, what we are doing in the Arduino, where we will need to tell what type of input and output we are going to use and its respective uh, uh, types. You can see this the LED I have given as a REG register and the clock I have given as a wire. So this CLK, you can give any name, but in a uh, constraints file uh, or constraints uh, code, we need to tell what is this clock. From actual hardware, how we are going to take this clock, we need to explain that in the uh, constraints file. While seeing the constraints file better, you will understand better than this. And uh, we need definitely a clock which is connected in the hardware pin. And we need a LED, we can name anything here. And I given this as a register. So we, I need just two things to make the LED blink. And I have taken a counter uh, with the file size of uh, 25 is to zero, which is nothing but uh, how we are making integer float and uh, long like a data type in the normal embedded C. Similarly, for this counter, I have fixed a size called 25 in, uh, 25 is to zero. And initially I given the value for this variable name called counter as zero. And let me begin the actual logic for LED blinking. And as I already said that in uh, usually in the Arduino we have a wide loop because loop will have uh, a main features only one, uh, one uh, flow inside the loop only the entire flow we need to uh, uh, entered. Whereas in the FPGA, we have different uh, uh, what uh, parallel operation. So anywhere we can start the, the logic. So here you can see the line number nine, it shows always at uh, post edge clock begin. It means that when the clock starts, this execution will start. Similarly, this always at post edge, we can create n number of times. It means that we can create or we can create any logic at any time when the clock starts. So it will uh, it will flow in the parallel way. So in this case, we are using only one logic to blink the LED. So just I want to have always at uh, post edge clock begin with counter is uh, lesser than or equal to counter plus one. So I just doing the increment operation as, uh, as we are doing in normal embedded C also. And if counter is equal to is equal to 50 million, and this should uh, make the counter again zero. It means that this counter will starts from one to 50 million. And whether this counter is capable of taking this 50 million is decided by this REG line number seven. So yeah, we, we have given 25 is to zero. It means that it is capable of handling this big amount of uh, numbers. So during this count time, the LED is given as a tilt LED. It means that it just it's it's going to toggle. 
toggle the previous value whatever the value irrespective of zero or one in the beginning it will tilt it how long it will tilt when the count starts from one to uh, 50 million so it means that the count of 50 million is nothing but for the 50 megahertz it's one second so we created led to toggle with one second delay so this is a simple logic in verilog we have uh, created so first we need to save this verilog now we are ready to go for the constraints so for the constraints go to this project manager under the source you can see a constraints and uh, click this uh, uh, click this uh, drop down under this one more drop down is there and click this double click this led constraint and this will open this file so for this constraint again i have one more code so i will copy this code and i explain how the code is going to happen or work so yeah now i want this clock to be taken from the actual clock of the fpj process what we are using and by seeing the data sheet, I understood that the clock is connected with the pin number called N11. So I declared the clock I'm going to, I have already used in the verlog, which is directly physically connected to the hardware name N11. So the syntax is very simple, send set underscore property, package underscore pin. It will give or it will tell, actually we need to take the uh, uh the the ic is actual pin number so ic is actual pin number clock is connected to n11 so that i declared with this clk and similarly what voltage it going to take we know that fpga will uh, will give a uh, logic for 1.1 volt 2.2 uh, volt and 3.3 volt so here in this case i want this clock to be uh, activated in the uh, voltage input output standard with the low voltage CMOS with a 33. So LV CMOS is nothing but the low voltage CMOS. I want that to be acted as a 3.3 volt. Similarly, I need to do for the LED pin also. So set property package pin T9. Now this T9 is uh, you, uh, what you are seeing in the screen. Uh, it's uh, you can see here it is T9 is nothing but uh, it's connected with the D9 which is the uh, bottom most you can see my pen cap i indicating but i need to operate this led i mean i need to change this led blinking to the top most top most is nothing but is it's connected with a j3 so i need to change this uh, t9 to j3 to actually reflect in the hardware so capital it's a case sensitive so make sure that you are entering in uh, case sensitive data so j3 uh, how to identify the pin connected to the board as a J3 or not? One thing is you can go and see the board in detail. You can see the pin number there. Uh, otherwise, you can get the data sheet of this uh, board, FPGA board, Arctic 7 FPGA board. They have mentioned how the uh, FPGA IC is connected with actual uh, layouts of this uh, PCB. So from that also, we can get the data. Again, I want to make this LED as a CMOS, a low voltage CMOS of 3.3 volts. So I just uh, declared as the IO standard as uh, LV CMOS as 3.3. And by default, all the FPGA uh, are active low. So uh, I want to convert all the pins to active high. So I need to have uh, these two lines, which drive eight, means get the port LED and then I need to pull it, uh, pull up. I need to make it at pull up and true. So these two lines, line number 10 and 11, will make the uh, the uh, FPGA to act all uh, the LED pin what we are having is active high instead of active low. Because the Verilog code what we are writing is for the active high or uh, uh, in, in my case, it is given as a tilt or toggle. It will not be a big matter, but still we need to have an idea about what is uh, default, uh, uh, what uh, pull down or pull out. So pull up. So we need to understand that. So these two lines will help us to convert the default active low to active high. So now we have completed the code in two stages. That is one is with the verlog and one more is the constraint. Now our files is ready. The next stage we need to uh, do the run synthesize as given in the video number one. 
if you have not seen video one, uh, I will give the description uh, link in the description. You can go and see the first and second videos. So you will understand what I'm trying to tell here. So first thing is I need to run the synthesize. This synthesize will convert the code what we return into the uh, logic gates that we are going to implement in the FPGA board. So click run synthesize. And the option, the launch directory can be a default. You don't want to worry if you have created a new folder. If you have not created a new folder, we need to change the directory. So I, in my case, I have created a new folder. So I, I keep as a default launch directory. And then option I need to select here is uh, launch run on local host. A number of job, uh, minimum six I have given, but anyway, we have taken only one job. That is not matter by you can keep it as six. But if you are going higher jobs, you need to increase this job. Okay, click OK, and then it will take more time to convert into uh, uh, logic gate. So by that time, you can see uh, the messages here, what it is showing, how it is converting, and then logs you can see under the tab of synthesize what it is happening here. We can see it. And uh, when it done, it will show what next to do. And uh, we need to follow the same procedure for implementation. And finally, after the implementation, we need to generate the bitstream, and then we need to link the hardware, and then we need we need to dump the program. Let me wait uh, till uh, the synthesize is done. Then you can see here it shows the synthesize is successfully completed, and it also has what to do next. So just I want to run the implementation. I can click this implementation and click OK. Again, it will take some time. So we need to wait till it uh, till the implementation part is done. And to see what is happening in the conversion during the conversion, what is happening inside the implementation, you can click this tab uh, implementation under the log and you can see what is happening in the uh, implementation part. And this way we have done two stages. One is uh, synthesize is done. Now currently uh, the implementation is running. Once the implementation is completed, then it will ask to generate the uh, bit stream. Till that we need to wait. Now you can see the implementation is successfully completed. And the next stage is we need to generate the bit stream. So instead of opening the implementation design, if you want, you can do that also for any simulation or other parameters. But uh, today aim is to make the hardware run. So directly I'm going for the generate bitstream. So you can click the generate bitstream and click OK. And again, the same procedure. And now the generation of uh, bitstream is started. And you can see in the message what is which stage it is going on. And once it is done, we are good to go to connect the hardware. And then we need to dump the code. And then we'll see what is happening in the hardware. You may have a question like every time if you want to modify, if you did some modification, we need to go all this procedure. In general, yes, we need to go all this procedure. But until otherwise, if you are not changing any uh, constraints, then directly you can go for generating with streams instead of going for synthesize and run implementation. Now the bit stream generation is successfully completed. Then I, now I want to open the hardware manager. So click the third option and click OK. Now it will open the hardware manager. You can see here. And then click this open target. If you already connected your board to your computer, it will show. Otherwise, we need to make sure that the board is connected. So click this open target and then click auto connect. Once the auto connect is clicked, it will try to fetch the a device which is connected to the computer and you can see under the hardware manager which controller or which uh, FPGA IC is connected you can see here once you can see if you see your IC number here then you are good to go to dump your program so dump your program is nothing but the bit stream what you have generated in the last stage that we need to dump that into the FPGA board so for that click this program device and then click the IC what you want to dump and it will ask where the file is. And you can see the file name usually will be the file name of uh, uh, what you have given in the module that is in dot .vertex vidlog file. In the first line in module LED underscore blink you are given no. The same file will come here as a dot .bit. So just click the program button. And now the program is 
dump and we can see the changes in the hardware uh, what i found is like uh, this j3 is having some internal problem in my board so i changed the same code with uh, r5 which is the third pin which is the third pin now it is uh, blinking and uh, the same co uh, code and led can be used for any other led pins so this gives a simple example of what is the digital output uh, using uh, FPGA board. In upcoming videos, we will see still more complex projects using uh, communication protocols and seven segment LED, uh, Bluetooth, Wi Fi. Thank you for watching this video and uh, stay tuned and subscribe my channel for upcoming videos. Thank you so much.